Hey everyone, welcome to the next episode in the malware series. Uh, in this one, I'm going to go over and show you how to use the socket module in Python. We'll make a real uh, simple client server socket program that can send data between the Windows 10 VM and our local malware server here. Um, there's some initial setup I want to do. So if you go to VirtualBox, we need to put the virtual box on the same network as my um, as my native computer here. Uh, now you might be thinking, shouldn't they already be on the same network? But they're actually not. If you uh, if you go to command prompt on your local computer and type in IP config, um, towards the top you'll see IPv4 address, and you'll see I'm at 192.168.185. That's that's my native computer's IP address and the network it's on is 192.168.1 you can tell that from the subnet right here um, but by default VirtualBox uh, if you go to settings um, I've already changed it but by default it's actually set to NAT so what it does is it puts all your VMs on a uh, different subnet than your local computer um, we, we can work with that uh, but it adds a lot more layer of complexity to, for this lab that I don't want to mess with. Um, but what it's going to do is you, if you actually boot up this VM and do IP config, you'll see it's on like a 10.0.1. It's on like a different network. So what I want to do is put the VMs on the exact same network as my, uh, as my local computer here. Uh, so if you do bridged adapter, that is what that does. Uh, we're going to change that to bridge adapter, hit OK go ahead and launch the VM and when I do IP config on the VM we're actually gonna see it's 192.168.1 and then it'll have a I don't know what the number will be but it'll be on the same network as this computer so they can talk back and forth to each other we don't have to worry about routing through different networks <clears throat> so let's go ahead and log into the VM here Oh, let me get the screen. Hopefully the resolution will fix itself in a minute. I should do full screen. There we go. Um, so if you do IP config on the VM, see now it's it's uh, 192.168.1.146. So they're on the same network. Uh, the next thing you might try just to confirm that, if I try and ping uh, 192.168.1.85, which is my local computer, you should expect to get a response back, but if you notice we're not, it's timing out. And that's because by default, the firewall on Windows 10 blocks ping requests. Um, so I don't want to turn the firewall off on my local computer, but for right now, I'm actually going to go into the firewall. If you go to the start menu and type in firewall, go ahead and launch it from the Windows VM. Um, I already did this, but you'll see the firewall is turned on right here. I'll go ahead and turn it back on so this will be what you'll see. You'll see it's turned on. Um, for right now, for testing purposes, if you go to turn Windows Defender Firewall on or off, go ahead and turn it off because it's actually going to block a lot of what we're going to try and do. In a future video, I'll, we're going to turn this back on because 99% of the time a, user, uh, a user's computer is going to have a firewall turned on. So I'll show you how to write some Python that when they execute it, will turn the firewall off or it'll make alterations to the firewall to let your program get through. Um, but for right now, just to test stuff, go ahead turn the VM's firewall off and then that should allow if we go to command prompt on our this is command prompt on my local machine if I do uh, ping 192.168.1. I forget what it was what's the IP address of the VM uh, 146 so if we ping the VM from my local computer, it, it, they can successfully see each other. So I'm getting a reply right here. Um, so now that that's done, let's minimize the VM. That's all the setup we had to do for that. So they can clearly, my computer and the VM can talk to each other. So I'm on my local computer right now. I've got PyCharm booted up. I'm going to make two files. I'm going to make one called client.py and one called server.py. 
All right, so the server.py file is the Python program that's going to be running continuously on my local malicious server here. Uh, the client file, once we write it, I'm going to convert it to an exe, and that's the file we're going to put on the Windows 10 VM that when it gets executed, sends data to our server that we can see. Um, this isn't going to do anything malicious right now, but uh, it's just to show you how the socket module works. And it's, it's a little confusing at first, but once you practice it uh, a lot, getting the initial setups, pretty simple. Um, so let's start with our server. A lot of the code's redundant in each one, um, but uh, there are, well, there's definitely differences, but you'll see. So for the server, we're going to import the socket module. And the you need two variables that we got to create. We're going to make server IP, and this is, hey, what is the IP address of the server? Uh, well, the server's IP is the 192.168.1. Uh, what was it? I forget what it was. 1.85. So that's this server's IP address. We also need to use a port. Now a port can be any arbitrary number between 1 and it's like 65,000 and something, whatever a 16-bit number is. Um, you... Uh, you can do a lot of research on what ports to use. Really, you could pick anything. Um, we're just going to pick five, six, seven, eight. There's different reasons why you would choose different ones, but you can kind of just pick an arbitrary number, and this will, it will work for this tutorial. Uh, so five, six, seven, eight is the one we're going to use. The next thing we need to do is create a socket object. So we're going to do this is going to be a long line of code. I'll explain it once I type it all out. So with socket dot socket and it takes two parameters. We're going to do socket.afinet uh, and socket.socstream as s. Okay, <clears throat> so sockets, socket objects work the same as uh, file objects, which is why we're using this with statement. So anytime you actually open a socket, once you're done with it, you need to remember to close it, otherwise it can cause issues. Um, same with files. Uh, so instead of at the end typing socket.close, you can just encapsulate the whole thing inside this with statement. And the with statement says, hey, once you're done with this block of code, close out this object right here. That's all that means. You, you can just as easily get rid of the with and just make sure you put socket.close at the end. But the with statement is just, I think it's nicer looking. Um, okay, so we're accessing the socket module. And inside it, there is a socket function that returns a socket object. I always get kind of confused on this because I always think of this socket function right here. I feel like it's a, I don't know how it works underneath the hood, but I feel like there's a socket class that returns a socket object. So I'm always wanting to put a capital S there, but it's not. It's a lowercase s, uh, so it's just like a function. Um, and the function takes two parameters. It's like, what type of socket are you trying to create? Um, this AFINet right here, that just means this is going to be an IP version 4 socket, um, which uh, means it's going to use this format for the IP address. It's not a version 6 format, which 99% of the time you're going to use this one. So just get used to typing that. Socket.AFINet just means IP version 4. The second is what protocol are you using? Is it going to be TCP or UDP? Uh, I don't know enough about sockets to understand why they call it sock stream. I feel like a, it should be called sock underscore TCP or sock underscore UDP, but it's not. It's sock stream. So uh, that just means we're using we're making an IP version four socket using TCP. If you want to use UDP, it's sock. Uh, dgram so you can do one like that but we're going to be using uh, TCP so stream and then uh, we're going to reference it with this variable called s all right <clears throat> so the first thing you want to do with this socket is we need to bind this IP address and port to it so to do that you just do s dot bind and it wants it in tuple form so we're going to put a tuple in there and it's going to have the server IP and server port now, once the socket has that information bound to it, we need to tell it to listen for connections. So you just do s.listen, 
and this takes one argument. It's how many total connections can this thing handle? Um, for our program, we're just going to do one. So once it receives one connection, it won't accept any more. Um, that kind of just depends on the type of program you're trying to write. But we're just doing, it's only going to listen for one connection. Now, when this code runs for our server, as soon as it gets to this line of code, it actually stops. And it, it, it won't execute anything below it until it actually gets a connection. So, but once it does get a connection, it will execute this line right here. And I'll explain this in a second as soon as I type it. All right. So once a connection comes in from a client, it's going to run this s.accept function. And that returns two things. It returns an object that represents the connection between the server and the client. And then a variable that just stores the client that connected's address. Um, and then below that, we want now that we have that connection object, we want to use it to send data back and forth between the, the server and the client. So we can do with connection. And we're using with because a connection works kind of the same way as the socket. Once you're done with a connection, you need to close it out. So you just do with connection, and you do while you do while true because uh, with the connection we want to create a loop that just sends and receives data over and over again, and then break out once it's done. Um, so I don't know what we're gonna want ours to do. We'll probably do this once a client connects. We'll just have the server send a message, and then both the programs kind of close out. It's just a super basic, simple way to show how sockets work. Um, so now that we have the connection, our server, which is this right here, uh, we're wanting it to send, um, I'll kind of explain this, uh, we're going to, uh, with this connection object, the connection has a, uh, the connection object has a function called send, and you can send data to the client that's connected. So we're going to send hello world, just a text message. Um, now, whenever you send data over a socket, you, you can't send, it has to be binary. You can't send just a string or an integer or anything. It, ha, it always has to be binary. So a quick way to do that in Python, if you just put a prefix of a B right before the string, uh, it'll convert this to binary. So connection.send, we're going to send the binary uh, representation of hello world. And then we'll actually just break. Um, so that's all the server is going to do. It's going to listen for a connection. When it gets a connection, it says, hey, with that connection you just got, go ahead and just send hello world to the client and then close this program out. It's going to break and then just close all this out. So that's our server. Uh, now let's go to the client. So we're going to import socket. And it's going to be a lot of the same. We're going to do server IP equals... Uh, 192.168.1.8 I think it was 85 is that it yeah 85 server port equals 5678 and we need to do we need to make a socket object with socket dot socket af inet and socket dot sock stream as s now here's the difference. In the server we did s.bind because we're binding that IP address and port number to the server. But with a client we're not binding anything. We're, we need to say, hey, what, what is this server you want us to connect to? So it's s.connect and then you supply the server IP and port number you're wanting to connect to. Uh, once it's connected, it will actually go... Um, yeah, once it's connected, the first thing that happens is our server sends a message. So on the client, we need to put s.receive. And this is what's going to receive that message. And we can store it in a variable. Um, we just call it data. And then at the end, we'll print the data out. And at the end, just so it'll stay on the screen and we can see it, we'll put input. That way the program doesn't close out. <clears throat> now this, uh, this receive right here, you need to supply an argument to it and that's the buffer size we're going to get into that more later for right now just put 1024 what this means is how many bytes need to come in before it starts processing before it starts executing all the code below it um, 
it's it's kind of hard to explain. We actually have to in a uh, future tutorial I'm going to do. We need this number needs to keep uh, changing every loop uh, that we go through it, and I'll show you more about like what this number means. But just just know that's when people start learning how to use the Python socket module. This is like the first thing they get hung up on because um, you'll run into issues where this number needs to keep changing, and you gotta it's kind of a process figuring out how to get it to work. But once you get it to work and you understand what it's doing, it's it's pretty cool. Um, but for right now, just put 1024. It will work. Um, so as soon as our client connects, it's going to receive some data from the server, and it's going to print that data to the screen. And then it's you know, I put input here just so the screen, uh, the message will stay on the screen. The program doesn't close out. Close out. Um, great. So now, whoops. Now what I want to do, I want to install, which I think I already did. Um, let's install auto pi to exe, just like we did in the last tutorial, because I want to convert this client.py file to an exe, throw on the VM. That way the VM does that person doesn't need Python installed. It just it just works. Um, I've already got it installed. So let's do auto pi to exe. Uh, we're going to want to grab the client is what we're wanting to turn into an executable. It's going to be one file and it will be console based because it's going to show some console text. Um, so go ahead and convert it. Uh, open output folder. So here's our exe file. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the uh, VM. And you should be able to just drag the client.exe over to the VM. Uh, if you're not able to do that, there may be something you have to change. If you go into the VM settings and go to, where is it at? Advanced. Yeah, go to advanced under general and for shared clipboard and drag and drop, you can just put this on bi-directional and you can copy and paste and drag and drop between your native and uh, virtual machine. Uh, just in case that d doesn't work on yours. I think I changed that earlier. All right, uh, so now here's our VM and it has the client, uh, client exe on it. And that VM does not have Python installed. Just remember that. So let's go ahead and run our server. And actually before I run it, I want to put one more line in here. When it accepts a connection, I want it to print uh, an F string that says connection established from uh, the address. So when it when a connection comes in, the server will print some text that says, hey, we just got a connection from, and then it'll list the IP address of the connection. Let's go ahead and run the server. I don't think I'll get any errors. Uh, actually, let's do this too, just so we can kind of see what's going on. Let's put a print statement here. It says server listening. And go ahead and run the server. So now it says server listening. It's stuck on this s.listen uh, method, and it's waiting for a connection. So we just put that like that. And now I'm going to run the client. The server says connection established from that dot .146 address, which is our VM. Uh, and then on our VM, the server sent back a message saying, hello world. So everything works. So that's like the basic fundamental of how to get the socket to work. And you kind of need to understand that to understand the later tutorials we're going to do, because <clears throat> we're going to be like, uh, I'll show you how to grab files off a computer and, and bring them over to the server, how to get a bunch of information off the computer and bring it over to the server. I'll show you how to have um, malware running on the machine on the actual uh, infected computer where they can't see anything but I can send commands over to the computer and, and have it do all types of stuff um, it pretty much there's like a hidden command prompt window that's always running in the background on their machine and I can constantly send it shell commands to get whatever I want um, so yeah a lot of cool stuff coming up but this is just how to get basic sockets working um, but yeah, let me let me know if I know sockets are kind of confusing at first. Um, let me guys know. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments, and I'll try and answer them the best I can. And uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your day.